Attention, everyone. Jake Peralta is an amazing, amazing, an amazing detective, ultimate human slash, and no one won the highest, slash genius, human slash genius, and the grand champion of the 99. For the record, I'm not a cannibal anymore. My new passion is needlepoint embroidery. Look at these two parrots in love. <laughs> a turtle with a monocle and a top hat. Wow, <laughs> it's so intricate. How do yeah. you... <laughs> okay, you got me. I was gonna eat you. That's still my thing. It's even affected my needle point. Look at this. Liver. A heart. Butt. An arm. Mmm. Oh, and there's this one that your delicious looking lieutenant asked me to do. The third clue. Where the devil lies, you'll find your prize. Wow. Well. <laughs> I know where the devil lies. Wunch's grave. Wow. Did Terry put up a balloon arch just for the heist? No, that was me. I come every week to install a fresh one. But enough chit-chat. Let's stick her up. I don't think we want to do that. Why? Are you scared of what she looked like? She's just a corpse with worms for eyes. No different than when she was alive. Found it. Here. If you don't tell me where the next clue is hidden, tell me why. Tell me why, from that time Jake made the perp sing that song. Wait a minute, you guys know about that? Were any of you actually there? You've told us the story many times. And tried to recreate the moment on several occasions. Working at the car wash. No, number two and five, you're off key. Number three, you're coming in way too early. I mean, what are we even doing here, guys? So which one do you think killed your family? Yeah, I gotta stop trying to recapture the magic of the original and move on. Anyways, back to the eighth annual heist. Oh no, Janet or Dan is erasing the clue. No! Damn it. I love that guy. He's so nice. Ruined the whole heist and we can't even be mad at him. Yeah. We gotta call Terry. Already on it. It's going straight to voicemail. No problem. I actually installed malware on his phone in case he started heisting. I have access to his microphone and speaker. So, Lieutenant Jeffords, can you handle the increased responsibility of being a captain? I'm glad you asked. I'm very responsible. Terry! Terry! Terry, it's Jake and the squad calling from your butt. Terry, Terry, Terry! I'm sorry, what's happening? I didn't hear anything. Terry, answer your butt. Answer your butt. Answer your butt. Don't ignore your butt, Terry! Terry, come on, it'll just take a second. We just need the final clue. A perfect world, a time of bliss, a loving and inspiring kiss. Yeah, we can't hear you. Please speak directly into your butt. A perfect world, a time of bliss, a loving and inspiring kiss. Wonderful. Thank you, Terry. That is all. A loving and inspiring kiss. That's got to be Jake and Amy. And we know it's not the last couple of years because they basically stopped kissing in front of us. All right. Wait a minute. A perfect world is a movie with Kevin Costner. Or should I say... Kevin Cosner. It's a kiss between Holt and Kevin. The one that brought them back together out front in the rain. Ooh. Well, looks like it's gonna be a sprint out of the elevator. This is unfortunate. I didn't want to have to reveal it this early. Reveal what this early? My most precious secret. My tattoo. <gasps> what am I looking at? Is that what I think it is? Kevin's human head on Cheddar's dog body? I asked for a tattoo of Kevin and Cheddar. I don't know why he combined them. It's... It's... It's the ultimate distraction. No, no, no wait, wait! What a performance. Cheddar didn't swallow any gems. This is all a ruse, just like my brilliant lie about the pumpkin costume. That was good. There is no chance in hell that any of this is real. Yep, you can see the gems right here on the x-ray. OK, so it's real. Uh, I'm sorry, who are all these people? We're co-workers involved in an elaborate Halloween heist. Do you seriously not talk to your bed about us? Seems to me Cheddar has the gems, and he's my property, so we win. Yeah, works for me. Time for the big wrap-up speech. I'm sure you're all wondering how we pulled this off. No, we continue the heist right here, right now. I'm gonna open him up. No, 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 there's no need to operate. The gems are small enough, he should be able to excrete them without discomfort. Medical term for excrete is dump out. It is not. Hmm? Okay, so we wait until Cheddar passes the gems and then we restart the heist the next time we all have a free day. Perfect, when will that be? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Valentine's Day Halloween heist. This is still happening? Why so curious, Terry? Hoping we'll let you participate now? Cause you can't! Oh no, I don't get to compete for a bunch of stones that were in a dog's butt. What will I do? I'll have you know that a dog's butt is cleaner than a human's mouth. That can't be true. Well, a dog's mouth is cleaner than a human's mouth and dog mouths lick dog butts, so you tell me where my theory is wrong. Feels no comeback. All right, the heist will pick up where we left off. There are six hours remaining and three teams left. The now sterilized Infinitude Gems will be placed back into the care of Bill. Oh, wow, Bill, looks like he had a rough four months. It was actually a great three months and then one really bad one. Okay, but you're here and you're happier than ever. I don't know why you think that. Let the heist re-begin!
Okay, your smoke plan was a disaster. Yeah, because your dog ate the gems. Because you tripped and dropped them. Yeah, because someone put a chair in my way that wasn't supposed to be there. I'm sorry, are you accusing me of something? Was that not clear? Do you need me to say it in Latin? I think you will sabotage me. I would never. I want to win. Which is why I'm initiating Operation Fabius. Okay. That does sound kind of cool. Well, I shouldn't. I may have to change the name. Roman dictator Fabius Maximus defeated Hannibal by avoiding battle and exercising patience. I can be patient. I just listened to you talk about that Fabius guy for like four hours. It was two sentences. Oh, shut up! And the infighting continues. I guess Jake and I still have the only unbreakable bond in the whole precinct. I mean... He is my husband. Uh-huh. No one ever gets divorced. Charles. I'm sorry. I'm just all worked up because of the heist. There's heist in the geist. No, look. There's something happening. I have flowers for Bill Humatrout. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a scam. There's no one in Bill's life that would send him flowers. It's true. Something's up. Flowers for Bill Humatrout? What do these guys are there? Flowers for Bill What flowers? is happening? You tell us. You're the one who just mysteriously appeared at this critical moment. I was stuck in the bathroom with Scully. It was a nightmare. For me, too. Hitchcock and I haven't had any time alone all day. I don't even know what he for lunch. Italian sandwich. Oh, with one kind of chips. Okay, stop. We don't have time for this. Everyone, form a blockade. Protect Bill. Protect the gems. Oh, I can't see anything. There's too many of them. Wait, they're clearing out. Yeah, because they got them. The gems are gone. Of course they are. This is clearly the work of Charles Boyle, the son of a florist. You think I'd make bouquets that look like this? With all this baby's breath? What do you think of me? Maybe it was Terry who sent the flowers. Yeah, I really wanted to spend $2,000 on Valentine's Day, not for my wife. Ah, he admitted it. No, Rosa took the gems. I saw you brush up against one of the flower delivery men who handed you the gems, which you gave to Scully, who placed them in his mouth. That's absurd. Yeah, that's absurd. OK, fine. But no one is getting those gems. Mm -hmm. None of you would dare to put your bare hands inside Scully's mouth. Mm -hmm. Who knows what kind of diseases he's got? My doctors sure don't. Scully, why wasn't that garbled? Yep, you swallowed them. You can see the gems right here on the x-ray. And you're sure those are the gems and there's not something horribly wrong with them? Well, the part that's horribly wrong with them is if you look here... Oh, nobody cares. What does this mean for the heist? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Easter Valentine's Day Halloween heist! We will once again pick up where we left off. The Infinitude Gems. You guys are still doing this? You know it's April now. Yeah, Terry, we're still doing it, and we're still having a great time. Why are the gems so pale? I guess Scully's inside sapped all the color out of them. I don't know, babe, you're undercutting my whole thing with Terry here. Anyways, the Infinitude Gems will go back to Bill, whose life seems to have unraveled even further. Tough march for you there, bud? Yeah, just a heads up, I sold my pants with the pockets, so I'll be putting the gems in my undies this time. No! no. I'll give him a fanny pack. Can I keep it? This could be just what I need to turn my life around. Yeah, Bill, you can keep the fanny pack. I don't have to do anything for it, do I? Because I will, if you ask, I'll do anything, even... What's that supposed to represent? No one answer that! Hey, Jake, can we talk? Uh, you really hurt my feelings by leaving me off your team. Oh, I had no idea you felt that way. Well, it doesn't feel great to be left out. Right, totally, I get it, I'm sorry. Captain Holt! What? Why are you yelling at my boobs? Because that's where the camera is. Nice try, Ray Ray. There's no camera, Jake. I was being serious. OK, fine. If you're telling the truth, then I sincerely apologize. But since you're not, I will defeat you! <laughs> ah! yeah, scary witch. Scary, so scared. Amy, don't feel bad. You can get in on my bet with Scully. At midnight tonight, we will steal his foot fungus cream. Thanks, that's very kind of you to include me, but I'll have to pass. The mind games have already begun. No, I'm not part of this. Oh, of course not. Neither am I, wink. Ugh. I'm not gonna meet my next boyfriend through a Charles setup. I'm gonna meet him in an illegal dance competition in an abandoned subway tunnel. It's go time, Boyle. Holt and Terry have closed the blinds, released the roaches. Alternately, he could win an illegal street race in which my love is the prize. Oh my god! Gina, look! Roaches! <laughs> look! <laughs> Ew, Charles! Kill them with whatever cologne you're wearing! Oh, I can't! They're moving too fast! I can't kill them! It's pandemonium! <laughs> if I die, turn my tweets into a book. Commence operation. Oh crap, wrong vent. <laughs> oh crap! Wrong vent. This was a mistake. Nice try, losers. You blew it. Yep, totally blew it. And all because Boyle marked the wrong vent. Oh my 
fault. I thought it was the right bet. Unbelievable, mister. You are, mister. I'm having trouble even believing you at all right now. That is the last time I let Charles mark a bet. Normally great at marking bet. I will not take it back. Never, ever, never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever, never, ever will I ever, never, ever, never, ever, ever, never, 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 I forgive you and goodbye. Should have seen us, Rosa. Charles and I were amazing. I somersaulted through a window, cut the crown out of a briefcase, and replaced everything in it under a minute. Yeah, I guess you helped a little, but our fake argument was super convincing, and all of a sudden we had to make it longer, and we did. Anyways, now all we gotta do is guard this drawer until midnight, and the best part about it is Captain Holt has absolutely no idea. He is such a fool. Yes, I'm the fool. You fool. So we wanted Jake to take the crown? Sergeant, are you familiar with the Hungarian fencing term Hozugiric? You must realize my answer is no. It's a strategy of letting your opponent win points early to give them a sense of overconfidence, thus exposing a much easier target for you later. You think he's overconfident enough? I'm the smartest man alive! I'm never gonna die! <laughs> Sir, do you have a minute? Of course. Jeffords will rendezvous later. Sir, I want to talk about Jake. OK. Amy, help! Our foot fungus heist has gone sideways. Hitchcock, not now. Scully doesn't know I'm in here. I stole his foot cream, but then I lost it. Amy, you're the only hope I have of finding it. You're a detective. You're a detective! Get out of here! Go! Sir, Jake really pissed me off, and I want to help you take him down. Well, that's an intriguing proposition. You certainly could be useful. Thank you. To Jake! I gotcha, Peralta! You're not fooling anyone! Why does everyone think that's where a camera would be? Because the cleavage cloaks the camera with its curves. That'll be all, spy. Sorry, I said cleavage. Mm -hmm. You're suspect number one, Jeffords. Whatever. Whatever. Spoken like a common criminal. Still a long time till sunup. All I have to say is, whoever took that plaque, you better watch out. Come on, Rosa. Come on, Boyle. Yes, sir. Come on! Bill. OK. Was the operation a success? You tell me. Blended right in with the pizza guys. Got out my bull cutters. Lock snapped on the first try. No one saw me leave. Gotta hand it to you. Beautiful plan. Beautiful execution. It's kind of like we're our own babysitter's club. Oh my god, I don't want tonight to ever end. Did you by chance read the excerpt from The Truth About Stacy? The one about the rival babysitters. That get caught smoking cigarettes? Well, let's just say that these two babysitters aren't getting caught with squat. This is where I stash a few cigarettes on the rare occasion that I need a puff. Dope. The hiding place, not the smoking. Marianne is better than that. She's a work in progress. This is so frustrating. There's no way of knowing who has the plaque. Amy and Rosa have it. What? How do you know? Diaz usually favors her left leg, but after zero dark pizza, she was suddenly favoring her right. Yes, yes. Which means that she was... You trailed off and didn't finish speaking. Continue. I don't want to. Her gate was thrown off because she was carrying the plaque. And I know exactly where it's hidden. In Santiago's secret cigarette stash. How did you find that? Whenever she gets stressed out, she smokes. And it's almost too easy to stress her out. Oh, Santiago, I... Never mind. What is it? What? I gotta go. And now it's time to send in our cute little secret weapon. I'm ready, Captain. I love the nickname. No, Charles, not you. I was talking about Cheddar. Oh, right, obviously. Over the past month, I've had him trained to retrieve plaques. And now, boy, it's time to make Daddy proud. Yes, sir. I could not have been more clearly talking to the dog. <gasps> is running out. 
we gotta stop playing by the rules and start playing dirty. Follow my lead, Bill. Okay, but first I should tell you my safe word is cabbage. Why? You know what? Never mind. It doesn't matter. Hey, Charles! Charles! Get in here! Come on! What is Holt up to? Does he have the plaque? Does he know who does? I'm not telling you that, Jake. I'm Team Holt, and there's nothing you could say that will change that. Okay, fine. Then I guess I have a new best friend, and his name is Bill. <sighs> You're not serious. He's just a prop for the heist. Sure, it started out that way. But you know how these things go. Spending time together, sharing intimate secrets, laughing about nothing in particular. <laughs> Cabbage. Oh, that's the plaque. It's hidden in the evidence room in the box marked cold cases 1972. Thanks, bud. We will always be best friends. <sighs> you hear that, Bill? Nobody likes you. Ain't she a beaut? Sexy. Immediately ruined it, Bill. Immediately. Here you go. What is happening right now? The last sands are running through the hourglass. Because your time is running out, and you are never going to get the plaque. Oh, Captain, stop. I, I just can't let you embarrass yourself. I told Jake everything. He threatened to replace me, and I freaked out hard. I'm sorry. It's OK. I knew you would betray me. That's why I fed you fake intel. What? That, the plaque was never in cold cases in 1972, as if I just put it in a box unattended. Uh, but you did. No, I didn't. Then how do you explain this? I have no idea. I put the plaque in my office. Cheddar? Come here, come here, come here, baby. What the hell? Yeah, thank you. Return to my office, please. What's up, you little turds? Wait, what is going on? We have the plaque. Yeah, I just got it out of the vent to rub it in your faces. I just got it out of the vent to rub it in your faces, name your sex tape. What? Something strange is afoot. Which of these are real? Black lights, what the hell? Oh my god. Her precinct is disgusting. Dear God, it's cock and Scully's desk. Ugh. Wait, look at the plaques. Are heists dumb? Are heists dumb? Of course not. That was a stupid question. No, Jake, it says heists are dumb. <gasps> Terry! Terry! Enough! Terry's had enough of this. This was supposed to be just a fun game, but it's turned you all into terrible people. Betraying your husband, putting your friend in the mail. Jake and Amy, did you guys buy each other any gifts this year that weren't tasers? No. no. Now you all pretended that this was all about helping me with my test, but none of you cared one bit. You know what? You all suck. Oh no, my voice command. Terry, look out! <laughs> Okay, I know that was bad, but let's not jump to any conclusions about whose fault it was. Wow, what a fun improvised song! His eyes aren't focusing, and he hasn't referred to himself in the third person in minutes. He's clearly concussed. Guys, this is bad. The lieutenant's exam is in 30 minutes. OK, look, let's just get him to one police plaza, and hopefully he'll wake up on the way. Charles, help me pick him up. Copy that. Oh, he's too heavy. We can't do this. God, how does he lift weights and also lift his arms? This is impossible. We'll never get him there. So you guys need help moving a body? Thank God old Bill's part of the squad. I mean, assuming I am part of the squad. Yes, 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 yes. Totally. Oh, yes. Finally, I have somewhere to live. What? Meet me in the alley next to my shopping cart. It's the one with all the cans. Seems like his plan is just to put Terry in the shopping cart. Correct. We'll take it. Room 410 is this way. OK, we got him here with one minute to spare. Yes, I knew we could make it. All right, Sarge, you ready to go in there and ace this thing? Yeah, I can't believe it. I'm going to be a pilot. OK, well, that's not great. Well, there's no way you can take the test in that condition. You're right. Amy, you're going to have to crawl inside his shirt and operate his arms for him. It's a ratatouille situation. On it. No, it's over. We have to go in there and tell them that he won't be making it. <sighs> so that's it, then. Rosa, you should probably go in first, since this is mostly your fault. Dude. All right, fine, I'll do it. Jeez. Wait, where is everyone? Where are all the desks? What is happening? What's happening is... You all suck! Son of a bitch stole my song. Wait, Terry has the bracelet? That's right. Me and my teammate Terry won. We fooled you all. You didn't do Okay, well, neither did Jordan's teammates, but they still got rings. 
All right, fine. Just tell us how you did it. Well, first, for my plan to work, it had to happen on a day when I could control everything. I couldn't let it be Halloween. You faked the gas explosion. Yeah, stupid actors almost blew it. What was with that moaning, Trent? I thought you studied at the Lee Strasberg Institute. Doesn't mean anything, they just take your money. Oh, that is a huge relief. I felt so bad about poking that guy's wound to make sure it was real. You should still feel bad about that. No, it was all fake, I'm totally absolved. Continue with your story, Sarge. I knew you'd suggest a heist as a distraction from my lieutenant exam. Then all I had to do was sit back and watch as everyone took things way too far. But how'd you know we'd get so out of hand? I spent the last six months sowing the seeds of conflict. Man, I am so sick of Jake saying he's the only two-time Halloween heist winner. I'm the, I'm the only two-time two -time Halloween, Halloween heist, heist winner. I can't believe everyone says you're not helpful during the Halloween heist. Just because they all think your fingers are too big. We'll show them. Thanks for inviting me over for dinner. Boy, that's hung in a real prominent place, isn't it? Not for long. I was manipulated? Sorry, Kevin. Don't apologize to him, Terry. It's his first heist. He needs to learn. Keep going. Well, after I got everyone acting like maniacs, all I had to do was make you feel bad by knocking myself out. The banner. But how did you learn my voice command? I didn't have to. I sold you the damn thing! No. And I want it to unfurl when I say you all suck. Absolutely. Pleasure, pleasure doing, doing business, business with, with you. you. The pleasure was all mine. <sighs> That's gonna work. I spent $1,800 on that thing. You did? Amy, stop interrupting. Terry's doing his big speech. Anyway, once my fake concussion was on display, I created the perfect distraction for my partner to do his job. Cheddar, you duplicitous bitch. I've been training Cheddar for months. Wow, what a fun improvised song! When I swapped the Hootsworths, I put a magnetic collar on them. From there, Cheddar followed us all the way to one police plaza, where he hand-delivered the bracelet to me right outside this room. But wait, what about the lieutenant's exam? Aren't you supposed to be taking it right now? Hell no. I took that thing weeks ago, and I passed. I'm already a lieutenant. You are? That's incredible! Lieutenant Jeffords. This is amazing. I'm so proud of you, Terry. All right, you've overstepped now, Bill. Talk now. You seem upset. Well, here's how the story goes. Remember that little Halloween bet that we made? You probably don't even remember. It was so early this morning. Any hoozle. It turns out the criminal I hired to lift your watch was not trustworthy, and I ended up contracting tuberculosis of the foot and subsequently losing your death watch. But in the end, I like to think this whole thing is going to bring us closer together, and isn't that what it's really all about? Merry Christmas! What are you saying? My watch is right here. No, I made a switch. That's a fake. No. This one's a fake. What? No. What? No. What? No. You were behind all this? You played me. Like Franz Blueheim plays the flute. But how? I've been planning this theft for three months. I know, but I've been planning it for a year. Last Halloween, after you won the bet, I went back to my office to do everyone's paperwork, but I did no paperwork. I started to plot my revenge. I began by creating a word cloud. But how could you possibly have known I was going to try and steal your watch? I knew you were trying to take something important to me. During the year, I drew your attention to my watch. You're eight minutes late. You're 14 minutes late. You're three minutes early in Chicago. You annoyed me into stealing it. Exactly. Now you had a target, but you needed a plan. Fortunately, it walked through the door, handcuffed to Diaz. Scumbag pickpocket is Dan McCreary. You can take anything off of anyone. Anything? Anyone? The look on your face, priceless. I put McCreary into my employ immediately. Fast forward to this morning. You commenced your plan. McCreary stole my watch and then replaced it with a replica. And while you celebrated, McCreary put my watch back in my pocket. The watch never left my person. Dun, dun, dun. I can see that you're enjoying this. Not nearly as much as I enjoyed phase two. Phase two. While you met with McCreary, Santiago placed a fire hydrant in front of your car, which she then towed away. Next, I had to take Charles out of the equation. He had a badge and a gun, and he would do anything to help you. Enter a parade of drunks that separated the two of you long enough for Terry to kidnap Charles. Then, 
two bears spilled their drinks on you and stole your wallet. Those bears, Scully and Hitchcock. I can't put my head off! If Terry kidnapped Charles, how did Charles tell me to get on the party bus? Eight months ago, at a morning briefing, I told the squad that a group of thieves was targeting party buses so I could record Charles saying, Jake, party bus! Toot toot! Get on board! I knew Boyle would never knowingly betray me. With your jacket and shoes gone, you didn't look like a cop, but you still had your badge. That is, until you entered the party bus. Rosa's feline dancing distracted you as a mysterious partier stole your badge on Halloween. It was you in the mask, you sly son of a bitch. Well done. But I do have to ask, those guys at the impound, did they really smash my car? No, in fact, I had them wash it. <laughs> Good one, Captain. You can't wash a car. So how'd you convince the whole squad to betray me? What'd you offer them? I asked them if they wanted to embarrass you, and they instantly said yes. Not gonna lie, that turns me on a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, in addition to the five weeks of free overtime, I believe I'm owed one more thing. Yes. Here we go. One second. <laughs> Very well. Captain Raymond Holt, you are an amazing police captain slash genius. But be warned, I started planning next year's heist just this minute. Good. Then you're only three months behind. You sick son of a bitch. Captain, sorry to interrupt. Some officers just arrested Peralta. What? They caught him scaling the side of the building with a blowtorch. <sighs> Captain, welcome to the end game. Would you care to shake the hand of the man who defeated you? God, I was wearing handcuffs. Oh, that hurt. Woo! <laughs> Climbing the side of the building with a blowtorch, what were you thinking? I was thinking I had better core strength. I got winded like 10 feet up. I knew you wouldn't win the bet, but your performance tonight has made me question not only how good a detective you are, but quite frankly, how smart you are. Well, that's not surprising. You constantly underestimate me. No, you've been correctly estimated. You are five minutes into your deadline. And here you are, handcuffed to a table in a locked room. Which is precisely where I planned on being. Captain, let me tell you a little story. You remember when I fell through your ceiling? Yes, that was six hours ago. It was, I admit, a disastrous failure. But it gave me the idea for Herman, the friendly janitor you met. With Herman, I commenced the perfect crime. I caught you as Herman. But you didn't catch Rosa. Come out of there. As it turns out, our friend Rosa is great at picking locks. Does not surprise me. No, me neither. Of course, I had to find a way to get her out of your office without you seeing her. So I created a diversion, not mistimed, perfectly timed, so she could escape unseen. What about the pigeons? Oh, the gray pigeons? They were a red herring, thank you. Their only purpose was to draw you into the copy room while two members of my team broke into your locked office. So now I had a way into your office and an open cabinet. All that was left was for the royal babies to steal your keys. Yes, but you didn't need the keys. The cabinet was already unlocked. You needed a way into the safe. And I got it. You were so concerned with getting your keys back, you didn't even notice the sergeant steal your phone. That's right, even the sergeant's on my side. I then had Charles dust your screen cover for prints. The greasiest smudges revealed the four numbers you used the most. The four numbers in your passcode. Based on your advanced age, I assume that you use the same passcode for everything, your phone, your email, and of course, your safe. That would be a fair assumption. It was at that point that I bumped into a girl dressed as a sexy robot and we got our flirt on hard. Sup? Sup? Jake Peralta. And how was flirting part of the plan? Oh, it wasn't, it just ruled. And that brings us to five minutes ago, when Amy came to your office and told you that I'd been arrested. I knew she's the only one you would believe because frankly, she's usually too lame to take part in these kinds of things. And as you walked over here, Charles awkwardly stuffed himself through your window and opened your safe. We had the four numbers of your code, which meant there were 24 possible combinations for Charles to try. That could take up to four minutes, which is why I really dragged out this explanation. I mean, really stretched it. I don't know if you noticed, but there were times where I was like, what am I even talking about? This isn't, oh. But now, four minutes is up, which means Boyle is either on the other side of that door holding your medal, 
or I've lost. Well, Captain, it seems that Jake isn't the only person you underestimate. 20 seconds to spare. Game over, Captain. Check me. I think you mean checkmate. You really need to learn how to play chess. How did you get everyone to help you? I appealed to their sense of teamwork and camaraderie with a rousing speech that would put Shakespeare to shame. For too long we've been put down, ridiculed, made to wear ties, but no more for today. We defeat him! And that worked? No. Oh, no, not at all. My speech did not inspire them. Come on. So I bribed them. I told them that if we pulled this off, I would do all of their paperwork. And since you're doing all my paperwork... I'm impressed, Peralta. Well done. Thank you, sir. In fact, the thing that you failed to see, Captain, teamwork is exactly Captain? what provided our success. Sir? He's not coming back. Uh-oh, it's not turning. I guess I'm not quite as predictable as you thought, and I also bet none of you can predict what I'm gonna do next. Use your key to open the safe and act like a dick about it? Yes, obviously that's what I'm gonna do, Rosa. I just have to be so spot on all the time, if I may. Hmm. Just get my skirt up. Thanks. Oh, look at that. The key fits. And the lock is turning, and the safe is... Empty? What? There's no cummerbund? Never was. It was always a belt. I don't understand. Who took it? We haven't heard from Charles in an hour. Maybe he betrayed the tramps. Oh, God. I just called us the tramps. What have I become? It's not Charles. I locked him up. Uh, I, 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 I put a GPS tracker on the belt. It's on the move, and it's going fast. Let's take my bike. They'll never catch us. Later, dorks. Should we follow them? I... <laughs> Captain, why are you giggling? I put a GPS tracker inside of Terry. Sarge, Kevin purchased one too many full-fat French yogurts. You want it? Absolutely. Enjoy, Jeffords. Enjoy. Devious, I know, but... I also put a tracker in Terry's yogurt. Same here. No reason, just because you're a great sergeant. <laughs> now suck it down. Yeah, no problem, take it. Swallow the gert. Do you guys think all that radiation is bad for him? I'm sure he'll be fine. He's lived a long life already. Yeah. Good luck keeping up with me. I've done my morning calisthenics. No, so I'll keep up with you. In hell. Hello, Jacob. Ah! Hames. What are you doing here? Why aren't you out looking for the belt? You and I both know the belt never left the precinct. I don't know that. Nobody knows that. I kept thinking, how did anyone swap my key? And then it hit me. They didn't. They swapped the safe. One of the handmaids, I'm assuming fake Charles, took my safe and then, of Amy, deposited a look-alike. Why did you give fake Charles so he'd help you? Nothing. In fact, he gave me something. The power of financial freedom. I invested in a pyramid scheme. It's no time to go into it right now. Okay. So, while we all tried to figure out who had the real key, Big Charles broke into the safe, removed the tracker, and led Terry and the whole squad on a wild goose chase. My only question is, which box is the belt in? Well, good luck figuring it out, because the clock is tick, tick, talking. It's that one. No! The dust pattern on top doesn't match its neighbors. You see, Jake, I'm always gonna be one step ahead of you. You've lost the ability to surprise me. You're just plain boring. Again, weird take on our very loving relationship. And it's midnight, so I guess I'm an amazing human slash genius. Yeah. Although, you might want to read the inscription on that there belt. Why? Oh, no. What does it say? Amy Santiago, will you marry me? Surprise. I'm so confused. I don't know what's happening right now. I'm so confused, I don't know what's happening right now. Title your sex tape. Oh my god, I'm shaking. I'm definitely gonna cry. Title of your sex tape. Wait, is this really happening? Is this part of the heist? If this is part of the heist, I will dump you so hard. No, please, Ames, like, it's really happening, okay? It's not part of the heist, I promise. This is real. It is? Yeah. Okay, here goes. Ames, I love you. I love how smart you are. I love how beautiful you are. I love your face and I love your butt. I should have written this down first. No, no, it's okay. Go on. I love how much you pretend to like Die Hard. I like the second one. You don't have to. Okay. Yeah. You're kind and you're funny and you're the best person I know and the best detective. Also for reals, I love your butt. I love yours too. Gross. <laughs> Amy Santiago. Will you marry me? 
Jake Peralta, I will marry you. <sighs> I love you so much. Hey, Jerkos! This little tramp escaped, so that ought to teach... Did you just... Mm-hmm. And did you say... Mm-hmm. 